authority. Lords, my lords. My lord. Thank you. Fourth oral question, Lord McInnes of Kilwinning. My lords, I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name in the order of paper. <clears throat> My Lords, officials, including our Ambassador in Baku, have engaged with the highest levels of the Azerbaijani government, including the Presidential Administration, to urge the immediate reopening of the Nachin Corridor. At the Organisation for Security and Cooperation in Europe, including this morning, and the United Nations Security Council, we have been categorically clear. The continued closure of the corridor risks a significant humanitarian crisis in the region, and access must be restored. My Lord, I thank my noble friend for his answer. May I ask His Majesty's Government what assessment they have made of the humanitarian effect of the blockade? And secondly, in relation to Article 2C of the Genocide Convention, what assessment has been made of the blockade? And I quote um, Article 2C of the Genocide Convention, deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part. My Lord, may I first of all uh, reassure my noble friend that the United Kingdom government takes its commitments under the Genocide Convention seriously. And where we are, um, the evidence is there that thresholds have been met. We will take appropriate action. I am aware that during and indeed after the 2020 conflict, there have been widespread reports of uh, atrocities. In September 2022, there was widespread media reporting of crimes which may amount to grave, grave breaches of the Geneva Convention. The UK Government has raised our concerns directly with the Azerbaijani Government and will continue to do so. On the humanitarian point, we are working very closely with partners. Indeed, this morning, again, I asked for access, which is being uh, currently attained by various organisations, including the ICRC, and we will be following up with direct conversations in Geneva as well. Humanitarian Aid Relief Trust supports a rehabilitation centre in Karabakh. I recently spoke to the director, who says the situation is dire, with shortages of food, the shops are empty, medical supplies, shortage of diapers, causing great problems for people with incontinence, and a shortage of fuel for transport for patients. Also, schools are closing because there's no food. Azerbaijan has cut off gas, internet supply, and power, causing a risk of vulnerable people dying from hypothermia. And families can't travel, so hundreds of children are separated from their parents. The function is so serious, some do actually fear genocide. May I therefore ask the noble Lord the Minister how long the UK government will actually con continue to allow Azerbaijan to inflict such horrendous suffering, and whether they will fulfil those genocide prevention responsibilities by working with UN Security Council to require the immediate lifting of the blockade and or launch humanitarian aid airlifts. My Lords, first may I commend the Noble Lady for her continued campaign in this regard. And I am aware both the Noble Lady and the Noble Lord Orton have written recently about the situation, particularly on the uh, institutions she's mentioned and other schools. As I've alluded already, we're working very closely with international agencies, including the ICRC, uh, to get their direct impact assessment of the closure. And the government will remain a significant donor in this respect. I've already alluded to the importance we attach to our obligations and commitments under the Genocide Convention, and we'll continue also to work very closely, as we've done in December, with our UN partners at the Security Council. Well, well, so what is the government doing to highlight the ambiguous role being played by the 2,000 Russian peacekeeping forces uh, in the region, and to ensure at the same time that Baku does not use the presence of these forces to conceal its own intentions and actions in respect of the corridor's closure? My Lords, of course we are aware of the presence of uh, regional actors and Russia, as the noble Lord has articulated, uh, following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Um, we currently have suspended all engagement with the Russian authorities, expect, uh, except on a very limited number of issues. Um, on the issue of their continued presence, of course, it should be something which would, uh, as it was intended, be there to keep the peace, not exacerbate the situation. However, I regret that I do not believe that to be the situation. However, we will continue to work and ensure all good offices, but particularly our direct contacts. Indeed, I met with the Armenian Foreign Minister in December to reassure of our good offices to try and reach a direct uh, resolution to this long-standing dispute and conflict. 
Well, no, it's, well, it's, doesn't this whole miserable, unending war, which has been going on since 1988, uh, indicate in the present situation how um, possibly unwise or unfortunate the Armenians were to put their trust in Russia? Because it's Russia's weakened influence and distraction where they're losing the battle in Ukraine has made them really very feeble supporters in securing the position of Armenian citizens in Nagorno-Karabakh. My lords, I'm sure after the situation and the prevailing uh, war on Ukraine by Russia, there are many countries now reconsidering their alliances with Russia, their support that they gain from Russia. And one hopes that we see greater stability across the European continent and indeed other conflicts around the world. There is a simple solution to this. Russia can step up to the mark, fulfil its international obligations and actually act as a peacemaker in conflicts around the world rather than making them worse. My Lord, it's, it's clear that this uh, situation needs to be resolved urgently, not least to try and ensure a long-term settlement between Azerbaijan and Armenia. What steps are the government taking to promote negotiations that will both protect the integrity of the territorial integrity of Azerbaijan and the rights of the Armenian citizens within Karabakh? Can the government in indicate that they are taking active measures to try and ensure a peace settlement, a long-term solution is resolved, rather than this long-standing conflict flares up again and again and again? My Lords, I agree with the Noble Lord. First and foremost, we do not believe, and I'm sure the Noble Lord agrees with me, that there can be no military settlement to this particular conflict. It has to be negotiated, and that is why we, the UK Government, are supporting uh, the efforts of the OS OSCE. We, there was a meeting there this morning at the OSCE, the EU and other partners to secure stability and security for the region. And as I've alluded already, we are engaging directly with both the Azerbaijanis and the Armenians. Indeed, my colleague, the, my honourable friend, the Minister for Europe, will be seeking meetings either this week or next with foreign ministers of both countries. The public blockade of the Latin Corridor, as we all heard, is causing humanitarian crises which have been widely condemned but to no discernible effect. Food is being rationed in Nagaro Karabakh, schools are closed because shortages, and families have been found separated. Does the Minister agree it is time for the international community and this government to set up pressure on Azerbaijan by imposing sanctions over and above existing embargoes against the supply of arms? My Lords, um, first of all, I welcome the Noble Lords again, deep insight on this particular situation. Um, and I agree with him on, on the importance of seeking resolution, working with international partners. And I've said in previous responses about the importance of a negotiation. Conflict is not the solution. On the issue of sanctions, of course, sanctions across the board, um, where we feel they will have a direct impact on a particular country, a particular organization, or a particular individual. We will exercise that, but I can't speculate on any future sanctions we may adopt. My Lords, the Noble Lord, the Minister, will have seen what Samantha Power of USAID has said about the implications of the blocking of the Latvian Corridor, where she said, in her words, a humanitarian catastrophe is unfolding. What discussions are we having with Samantha Power and our allies to ensure that medicine, food and energy, as described by my noble friend Lady Cox, is actually reaching the 130,000 Armenians who are blocked off in Nagorno-Karabakh. And given the answer that he gave me in December to a question about the Joint Analysis of Conflict and Stability, the JAC's assessment by his own department, which was completed in early 2022, will he agree to place a copy of the JAC's assessment in the Library of Your Lordship's House so that we can know whether or not the Government really is honouring the obligations under the Genocide Convention, which he referred to in answer to the question from his noble friend, Lord McInnes? The noble Lord will know on the actual uh, opinion the JAC that he referred to. It, it's not Government policy. We don't put that in the public domain. But what I can share, say to the noble Lord, as I said to him earlier during other debates and questions we've had on this. Um, I will offer the Noble Lord a meeting, including with our officials, to share the assessment of the situation on his earlier point about working with the United States, other partners. Indeed, we are. As I said earlier, we are looking for a direct response from the ICRC. I've again asked our Ambassador in Geneva to engage directly with the ICRC to give a full assessment, and I'll provide further details to the Noble Lord and place a copy of that letter in the Library.
My Lords, can I push the noble Lord, the Minister, a bit more on Russian involvement and particularly their so-called peacekeeping role? He mentioned the fact that uh, uh, you know, he's making clear the cost of alliances with Russia. Can you tell us a bit more how we are working with our allies to expose their role, particularly in the corridor that we've been discussing? My Lords, I'd say Russia's doing a pretty good job itself about exposing its lack of um, activity to bring the two sides together. I think what's demonstrably clear to all partners and I believe also to others who have aligned themselves with Russia, either within a European context or a global context. Russia is not a reliable partner. It is not seeking peace. It was there to actually provide stability and security, and its action in uh, Ukraine have demonstrably shown what its intention is. We do believe, though, there is a solution to be found. There are existing structures such as the OSCE, such as the UN, and with our partners in the EU that we can collaborate, work together to ensure, for, first and foremost, as we heard from the noble lady Baroness Cox, the noble Lord, Lord Alton, about humanitarian access, it needs to be increased. And secondly, that we do find a long standing solution to this conflict, which has gone on for far too long. My Lord, that concludes oral questions for today. Second reading of the